I'm a hypnotherapy trainer. I'm from a legal background and I was a trainer in the law profession for a long time. And then I went on a hypnotherapy course to learn NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. Yeah. But they had in, uh, hypnotherapy with it. And I was so enamoured by what hypnotherapy could do so quickly that I stopped what I was doing to everybody's disdain and absolute shock um, stopped what I was doing and I opened a hypnotherapy practice and then General Hypnotherapy Standards Council realised I was a trainer and asked me to train people in hypnotherapy and now I train only advanced hypnotherapists those who were already trained and I train them to advanced level like Paula is. Yeah. So is that specifically in NLP that you're training them in? Well, NLP is hypnosis with your eyes open. And a lot of people in the commercial world know about NLP and utilise its tactics in a marketing sense. And the media do as well to sway opinion. And so I always say that I dehypnotise people because we've already been hypnotised. So I take away the programming that is stopping them from living a fabulous life. So we looked up about your Enneagrams and they did a quiz, didn't you? Some of you did a quiz to decide which personality trait. So I, I was a one, I was a perfectionist, which really surprised me. Is I, I am simplifying this, Kate, though it's really complex. I mean, yeah. as you know, the book that I did was so complex that even Paula had a hard time with it. So I've simplified the book and the book is a lot simpler now and it's called the Enneagram Soul Types. So this was kind of called the imprint of your soul because it's at a soul level, these personality types. And it was never intended to be any sort of a personality testing tool. In AD 375, a Greek philosopher called Evagrius developed what he called the eight evil thoughts. And it's basically how we uh, succumb to the dark side when we're under terrible duress. We all have our go-to thing and we kind of overdo whatever our personality type is. And so he developed these, um, philosophised about these eight ways we descend um, so that we're not no longer acting in our highest good. And then over the years, uh, Pope Gregory, he stole them and called them the uh, seven deadly sins. And so uh, all of those seven deadly sins, there are nine actually, but those seven deadly sins were more like... Um, how do we behave when we're under terrible, terrible strain? Like if we were um, an eight type, for example, we would be the one that was the angry one, always wanted to blame somebody. But we want to blame somebody so we can put it right, you know? So there's good and bad, if you like, aspects to every single personality, so you can't pick a good one. So they've evolved into personality types because of our sin, if you like, the seven deadly sins. But it's also, um, originally was about our childhood wound, how we got incredibly hurt up to the age of seven. Beyond seven, we've kind of got other things active. But up to the age of seven, we were highly influenced and we get incredibly hurt. It's like our world shatters the childhood wound becomes part of our development. And then we've got our poisons and our passions. I mean, lots of people don't like a certain thing, but if we're a certain personality type, um, such as a nine, for example, a nine, um, very balanced type, quite even-tempered, but if um, lots of people would know that perhaps overeating isn't a good thing. But with the nine, if you go there, whoo, that's a slippery slope down. You know, other people would say, yeah, it's not, not good to overeat. Mm -hmm. um, an excess with the seven, for example, fun-loving, happy-go-lucky, 
usually on the good side but when a seven overdoes the <laughs> they're the drug takers they're the ones that get really addicted to having a good time until it doesn't become a good time anymore you know so um, you see how all of these are based on our um, all pervasive sin if you like so the sin of the eight would be wrath you know the wrath of God so angry about something and um, we all have um, our particular way so some people that would um, feel angry wouldn't necessarily display that anger they would they would withdraw instead because they might be terrified of what's going to happen should they become angry and other people might instead of getting angry they'll comply they'll agree to anything because they just want you to stop going on so the way that we react under duress and whatever kind of sin we gravitate to is part of what then becomes this personality testing tool so come on then somebody volunteer what you are so we know that I did mine I did mine twice I got one and five okay <laughs> I'm, so, I'm going to hope to reveal to you that they're rubbish these online tests all right okay it's so very complex and yeah. um also you doing it yourself is really a bad thing because you <laughs> we like to think we know ourselves pretty well but if you then run your answers by somebody else that loves you and knows you very well you'd probably get different answers so um the way we we have an internal experience as you all know and an external experience and sometimes how we how we think we're behaving internally from our own viewpoint is quite different to how somebody else perceives us to be